But that was no longer the language of most of those that were hearing him. So Ezra, along with Nehemiah, along with the Levites, they interpreted for the people the meaning of what Ezra was reading so that everybody could understand. And the scripture tells us that the ears of the people were attentive to the book of the law. And the text states that they were all standing as they listened from early morning to midday, about five hours. That's pretty remarkable. We're doing well to stand for two verses of a hymn. That's about as far as we're going to go. Five hours probably. They stood and listened. So five hours is a long time. The Super Bowl doesn't even last that long. And where do we watch it from? My recliner. And what have I got next to? My fritos and my rotel and whatever libation you happen to want. You know, we get comfortable in times of important things like the Super Bowl. These poor folks, they had to stand up for five hours. So the people heard. The people heard what was required of them to live as God's children, and they applied it to their own disheartening circumstances. Isn't that what the Bible is about sometimes? How did God work? in the people's lives then. That same God can do the same things in our lives today. And those people rec recognized their wrongdoing and their sin, and they were overcome with grief. They had failed the Lord. They had failed their heritage. They had not held fast to the foundation of their identity. And if you remember what the scripture said, what did they do? They wept. Well, if we look in the mirror at ourselves, and if we are brutally honest about what we see, and we see ourselves as God sees us, as sinners who have fallen short of the glory of God, and who have missed the mark again, we begin to feel guilt. Guilt hurts. Guilt hurts. And shame eats away at our insides, at our souls, but God loved the children of Israel that were gathered there for the reading of the law. And God's law brought tears to their eyes. God's law brought grief to their hearts. And God's law brought their knees to the ground, but flip the coin. And then there's God's love. And God's love, even though the law had brought them unhappiness, God's love, God's grace, God's mercy for each one of them gathered there and each one of us gathered here, raised them to forgiveness and raised them to joy. Here at the scripture, do not mourn or weep. For this day is holy to the Lord, declared Nehemiah, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Folks, we're too tied up. We're in bondage somewhat to our wrongdoing and to those things that are wrong in our lives. And guess what? I can't free myself from it, nor can you. But hear those trumpets there at the water gate. Sound those trumpets. Gather around that table. Slash in the pool with the baptismal waters. That's the gate to new life. God's law does bring us to our knees. But God's love, God's forgiving love and mercy and grace raises us to celebrate the victory that we have over wrongdoing and sin. Remember those last words of the scripture. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that is anything but trivial. That is the way that God intends for us. That is the truth that God has for us. And friends, that gives us the life eternal that God wants for us. For each one of us sitting here this morning. The joy of the Lord 
is our strength. In the name of the Father and the Son.